what's going on here with MaritimeGrinding.com. I picked some uh, sun chokes this week and today I'm going to show you uh, one way to prepare them, just one of many ways to prepare them. You can use these in all kinds of things. I throw them in with soups, I add them to stir fries, I even hide them in spaghetti sauce. Um, they're very sweet and they add sweetness to dishes. So uh, they're kind of like a you know, multi-use uh, vegetable. They're ridiculously easy to grow as I mentioned in my video when I was harvesting these. So uh, there isn't a lot of work that goes into preparing them to cook. Um, I, I just thought I'd walk you through that because um, the first time you grow these, they seem like they're going to be difficult to clean. They've got like a lot of, if you look at them here, they've got a lot of nooks and crannies. And so they're, you know, a, 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 a bit of a challenge to clean, but if you use the techniques I'm going to show you here, uh, it's not that big of a deal. I wasn't going to show this part of the production, but see the, the sun chokes, they, 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 because of their, their structure, they have a lot of places where dirt tends to get stuck, right? So it can be a bit intimidating to some people. See how it's all jammed in those little cracks and stuff? So I found that the easiest way to get it out is to first just fill your bowl, the bowl you, you know, this bowl is full of dirt and all kinds of stuff from the garden. Fill it with water, maybe about that much, so it's just this dirty, you know, muddy, muddy water type thing right now, right? Just fill it with water and, and just move them around a bit. And uh, that'll get a lot of it out to start. And it just makes it a lot easier. If you were really busy, I'd just fill it and leave it, right? But I'm, I'm doing this all in one go today. And so you can see this, this uh, water's full of grass and sticks and all kinds of stuff, right? And then you just, just take them out. They're still not clean yet, but that just it just speeds things up a lot. Just to do that for like a, a step one sort of thing. Right. I can't dump this down the sink because it might, might jam things up. I'm just going to have a, I have a deck over here. I'm just going to go outside and throw the water off the deck. Uh, that sort of thing really drives my wife nuts, but uh, uh, oh well. <laughs> but uh, it just, that's the easiest way to deal with it. All right, so this is the, the second step. Just sort of, there's still some sticks and twigs in there, so you just sort of sort of dump it off. And you just take every piece and you know break it if you have to to get get the little bits out. It doesn't take long. Just give it a quick quick once over, and as clean as you can. You can eat the skin. The skins are totally totally fine to eat. You see how I've mentioned before they kind of look like ginger root, right? They don't, they don't taste a thing like ginger root, but they, they look bear a striking resemblance to it. Oh, so it's grass in here. That's the idea, right? Alright, you get the I think you get the I think you get the picture. So here's a good example. Here's two pieces. There's a, there's a spot here where it's sort of jammed together and I can't get the dirt out. So you just, just break it, right? And, and the dirt will wash away. Trust me, it's worth it. And this only takes a few minutes. It's not a big deal. And if you're used to growing your own food, you, you always have to wash things anyway. So um, these are the sort of things you get pretty fast and efficient at over time. And uh, conceivably, when your kids are a certain age that you can just get them to do everything and you can just sit back and take it easy. Uh, I'm not there yet, <laughs> but it's definitely the plan. Right, so we got them all nice and clean. All right, here we go. And uh, the next step is to examine them and just, you know, you got a container to, to put these in. And you just take a, take a paring knife and like, like this piece here has got a, a, a funny looking spot, right? Um, so you just cut that off. You just you're just going to cut off anything that doesn't look, uh, you know, nice. So so it should look like here. Here's a piece here, right? It's nice and white. There's like one dark spot. So I just cut that off. Just just anything that doesn't look appetizing, uh, remove. They're 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 pretty pest free. Um, so you really don't have a lot of issues. Sometimes there's spots you just didn't get clean when you were cleaning them. So you just it's just easier to <laughs> cut those spots off. Um, but it's, it's not that big a deal. Most of them are just fine. Like, um, here's a piece that doesn't need anything to be done to it, right? So I'm just going to clean this up right now real, as fast as I can. Let's, let's see how fast this takes.
mention something here. Um, you know, someone someone mentioned that they like the tips in my uh, videos, my cooking videos. So you'll notice I'm not I'm not holding the paring knife like this. I'm actually choked right up, so it's you know relatively short. Right, I got most of the blade in my hand. You just have way more control. I mean, sure, you're you're running, the, and this knife is ridiculously sharp. It's a very very sharp knife. Um, but the, the knife is touching, the back of the knife is touching my fingers, right? So nothing's touching the, uh, you know, my thumb might, might glance the blade, but really it's just using, I'm using my thumb to sort of guide, guide my hands as I, as I work the knife through the vegetable. So I'm sort of, you know, pulling, I'm using my thumb against the vegetable to pull the knife. I'm not, I'm not pulling with my body, I'm cantilevering like that, right? Almost like a pair of scissors or something like that, right? So you get this control, so you can you can you can negotiate, you know, tight little spots like that. It's just one of those little tricks that, uh, again, it's those knife scale things. If you're new to my videos, uh, especially my cooking videos, I, I'll often mention these little technical things just because I, uh, when I'm in the grocery store, I notice people buying all this pre-made food, and it just seems to me that. That, that seems to be evidence that people have lost all those basic prep skills. I and mean, I'm lucky I've worked in a, I worked in a kitchen very short, a very short amount of time as a prep cook, but I learned a lot. And uh, the difference between someone with really basic uh, prep cooking skills and someone without them is huge in terms of the time it takes them to prepare food and how overwhelmed you might be at the prospect of taking a whole bunch of you know, raw materials and turning them into a nice meal. Okay, so I got these all sort of cleaned up. So everything here is basically food, right? So the next stage is to, to get these cooking. Uh, I got a pan on the oven. I got the heat turned up to, uh, I got the heat turned up to about seven. And uh, put some uh, olive oil in there. You don't have to use olive oil, just, just what I've got today. If you have olive oil, don't, don't let it get too hot or it'll burn. Uh, a chef knife here, have a bowl, and we're just going to cut these up into, into pieces. I would say about about this size, maybe like an inch, you know, give or take. You don't have to be too fussy about it. This is just to allow them to, um, to cook. And we're trying to get uh, everything uniform for no other reason than uh, it's easier to judge the cooking time, right? It's, it's, easier, it's easier to judge the amount of time it's going to take everything to cook if everything's uh, roughly the same same size. It's not about being an anal retentive or, <laughs> or a control freak or <laughs> anything like that. It's just you, you want to cook this and you, you want to know, you know how long it takes everything to cook and um, it just makes it a lot easier to do. For, for this for this amount of sunchokes, about uh, oh about uh, three good sizes, a good sized uh, piece of garlic. It's like the size of I don't know the size of my the volume of my thumb. <coughs> Training. I, I, I worked in a restaurant. At one point in my life, I wanted to be a, uh, a cook. And then I worked in a restaurant for one month, and I realized that that is probably the hardest job in the world. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not hard in and of itself. It's hard because uh, people treat you like garbage in that industry. It is a, and the people that make it in that industry are, are tough, very mentally tough individuals, far tougher than me. It is a tough business. People are not nice. And everything you do is on a deadline that you have not set. It's uh, very stressful, not very rewarding. I did learn a few basic skills, and uh, uh, you know, I, I improved upon them over the course of my life, and certainly have, have made it a lot easier 
uh, in my home preparing food, that's for sure, and worth learning. And you don't have to take any special courses, just just you know watch some watch some how-to videos on YouTube and about how to hold a knife and how to you know uh, use it and timing and, and logistics and all this sort of stuff. It's, it's all very commonsensical stuff. It's just things we don't typically um, uh, think about, especially in our culture in North America where we're just taught to buy, buy everything and not to create anymore. Uh, I think it's a, a tremendous loss, uh, aside from the fact that it's just uh, sad that people aren't, uh, you know, people are just consumers. They don't um, make their own food. They don't grow their own food. There's also the nutritional uh, deficit that's a result of that. Anyway. <laughs> Another, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> okay, so I got these ready. I think the pan's hot, so let's go over to the pan. Is the pan hot enough, he asked. Well, uh, I can just kind of tell by the way it looks, but uh, uh, the, the simplest way to tell is to just, you know, get a little bit of water. Don't dump the water in, but just put your hands in, the, put your hand in some water from the tap and just... should make a noise like that. It's ready. We're going to put our garlic in first. You could add uh, some sort of thing like a bacon or something like that here if you wanted to. I'm not, not going to bother, um, but uh, you could. You want to move your garlic around in the oil a bit. Let the oil take up the flavor of the garlic. And to that end, maybe add a little bit of uh, uh, salt at that stage. You're going to add a little bit more later, but. I'm not going to add any uh, heat to this, you could, but um, it's a sweet dish. Uh, sun chokes are very sweet uh, and they have a sort of naturally smoky taste. So I'm just going to add a little bit of pe uh, pepper. It's always good to uh, fry your spices. I'll just move that around a minute. Might even add a tiny bit more oil. I've got about maybe a tablespoon. This might be a tablespoon and a half. And you don't worry about. You know, this is a low-fat dish by, by by nature because you're eating a vegetable, right? <laughs> the vegetable has no fat in it at all, so I wouldn't sweat the, the whole fat thing. Oops, oh, a little better, get a little bit of light on the subject. Anyway, the whole room's starting to smell like garlic, so I think we've got enough uh, garlickiness into the uh, oil. Now we just dump these guys in. All you're going to do for the next, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes, I would say, is to, you know, let them cook for three minutes, then move them around, let them cook for another three minutes, move them around, and so on and so forth, until you, you know, there's some evidence that they're browning, right? So I'll, I'll stop the camera here, but I'll, 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 I'll bring you back in, in in various intervals to show you that process. All right, that's the first uh, three-minute interval. I forgot to add some salt, so I'm going to do that now. It doesn't really matter so much. I'm going to add uh, two pinches of salt. A dash, dash, or pinch. I'm going to quantify that. Just move that around a bit. Just kind of brown things a little bit at this stage. Smells really good. Alright, let that sit for another three minutes. Alright, this is the end of the second three minute interval. Again, we're just getting everything uh, in contact with the uh, with the oil and with the pan, right? We're trying to brown things. Just a little bit of what's that? Very much in spot there. The piece I missed, clean, no big deal. All that flavor going into the oil, and I'm moving it around so everything's touching everything, so that the uh, that the sunchokes can take on that nice mellow overall flavor. All right, I'm gonna do another three minutes. All right, so this is the end of the third <laughs> high heat session, I guess. Around seven or eight to heat. Okay, so now I can just tell it's starting to caramelize. Uh, there's a little bit of brown, and uh, oops, 
turn that off. Uh, the bottom of the pan is starting to, you know, glaze, I guess would be the term. So things are starting to stick a tiny bit. So that tells me that it's, it's time to uh, turn the heat down and let this go. So at this stage, you could you could put it in the oven at 350 for half an hour, or you can just leave it on the on the stove top on like low with a proper lid. So I got a lid here that fits fits properly. It's going to hold all all the moisture in, right, so it won't dry out. So I got it down on low, like one you know the one setting. You can just leave it like this for half an hour, or if you had the oven going, you could put it, um, you know, down in the oven uh, and uh, leave for half an hour at 350. If you're going to leave it on the top of the stove like this, you're going to want to give it a little stir every five minutes or so. So you got to be around if you're going to do that. If you want to just sort of <laughs> set it and forget it, you can put it in the oven. All right, so it's been about uh, 35 minutes or so, and uh, let's have a look here. Again, you can do this in the oven. And if you do it in the oven, you don't you don't put a lid on top. You have a lid when you're on stove top to maintain your, to maintain your heat, right? To keep the heat sort of almost like you're turning this pan into like a little oven, almost like a Dutch oven in a, in a sense. Um, if you're going to put it in the oven, you'd leave it open. It would look different, right? It's, it's a bit uh, more wet when it's in the oven. It's a little bit more dry, but the the texture you're looking for when you when you uh, when they're done. Uh, if, if you take one and you, you go to eat it, it should be soft. There should be no uh, crunchiness when you're chewing it. It should be soft all the way. This is in my opinion anyway. It's not, I didn't grow up eating these or anything like that, but I find when they're soft, they taste better than when they're crunchy, when you've been cooking them. So they're done cooking when they're completely soft. Um, when you cook them in the uh, oven, when you bake them, they get more of that smoke. They're, they're better uh, in the oven. I find they get more of that smoky taste. taste. But this is a perfectly fine way to do it. It's, it's easier in certain regards because you don't have to fire up the oven. And I, I just I, mean, I did it this way today because I don't have the oven going. I'm not going to waste all that electricity when I can use a fraction of it to do it this way. It's just, just the way I sort of uh, think. It's a question of how much electricity do you want to use. So uh, you can do it on stovetop. It's perfectly fine. So the, I've I just tried some earlier. It tastes really good anyway. I mean, let me. Put this on a plate so you can. I'm going to move the camera so you can get a little bit better look at these. All right, so here we are with these, and uh, let me just uh, put them on a plate. So I mean, this the, these would comprise a, a starch component of a meal. Um, you know, it seems like uh, everybody's on these crazy high protein diets these days, and uh, uh, nothing wrong with starch, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, this this would be like. Uh, if you were going to have uh, potatoes or parsnips or pasta dish or whatever, this is the starch component of a meal. Um, I often, when I cook, we usually have like two different starch dishes <laughs> on the plate, to tell you the truth. Anyway, the smell here is really nice. It's, uh, I can't really describe it. I mean, it's, of course it smells like garlic and uh, you use salt to taste. Um, I went a bit light with the salt. I, I tend to like things a bit <laughs> salty. Um, I might add another dash before I, uh, I plate it up for people to eat. This is the, the my opinion, the right amount for you know a family of four um, for everybody to have a good a good helping. It's it's a bit mushy, but it's, it's it it just tastes good like that. <laughs> <It's all laughs> you just gonna have to trust me. It's um, it's a different sort of food, so it's, they don't cook like potatoes where you can get them crisp. They 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 go soft and. They, they get, at least in my experience, they seem to get soft. But it doesn't matter because the flavor is just very uh, unique. Right, they just have, uh, here's a look. So it's not the most uh, colorful looking. There's lots of different ways to cook these, right? I'm just, today I just did a really basic, you know, side dish. You'd have this with other things, right? Um, but this is a really simple way to cook it. And not, a, not a big deal to prepare. And uh, they taste really good and uh, easy to cook. So, sun jokes, very good. I hope, uh, <laughs> hope you found that interesting and that gave you some new ideas and if, if you're not growing uh, sun jokes in your garden, I would give it, give it a shot because they're ridiculously easy to grow, not too hard to prepare, uh, easy to cook and they taste great. So if you found that interesting, please like, share, subscribe, 
Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden and in your kitchen. Thanks for watching. <laughs>